Hello, my name is Eric Plate. I am here with Hanchi Bruce Jetnik, who has taken his time today to speak with us about some questions uh, people have provided us regarding a few things. So uh, with that, I would like to say hello, Hanchi Jetnik. Hello, how are you, Eric? How are you doing? Doing great. Looking forward to talking to you some more. Um, we were talking earlier offline a little bit about uh, MAX, the Martial Arts Collective Society, and how that kind of started and where it came from. Can you uh, kind of go back through that again a little bit and uh, talk about MAX? Yeah, sure. Martial Art Collective Society is something I started uh, well, many, many, many moons ago. Actually, it's got to do with The Gathering, which is an event I started throwing in 1981. That was shortly after uh, my one of my teachers uh, was deceased, and it's been going ever since. Uh, the Collective Society is an organization of organizations. They are practitioners and organizations that have always been very, very supportive of each other. The idea, it's like... Um, it's it's non-denominational. In other in other words, it does not. Uh, it's not dominated by one style or the other. It's dominated by the essence of the arts. Um, we all come from the same place, and therefore the collective society is about that. And people that have been going to the gathering since uh, 1981 uh, are my biggest supporters, and I am their supporter. Um, I love all of the arts. And that's what this is all about. So the Martial Art Collective Society is an organization of organizations. And in other words, again, like I said, it's non-denominational. In other words, we're not one style or the other. All of these different systems and some of the greatest teachers of all time have uh, supported the gathering. Yeah, can you talk a little bit more about that? I know we were talking about like the first gathering, Sig Kufarath and others were there. Can you talk about some of the early supporters you had sure. and you know, where they are today if they're still with us? Sure. Well, the gathering, the very first one that we had, um, it was in an uh, area in California called Woodland, California, and actually uh, one of the best-known uh, practitioners and teachers there was uh, the late Sig Kufrath. Sig Kufrath was uh, seen by many as the successor of the late Professor Henry Okasaki. Uh, Professor Kufrath was a dynamic teacher, a uh, great individual, and he was a uh, the, the best way I can explain him and uh, is I talk to his daughter a lot, Leslie. And Leslie Kufrath, the one thing I always tell Leslie about her dad, he had a he had a very uncanny smile. It was when when the guy showed up, you knew he was watching you. And uh, he was a great man. He loved his teachers, and uh, he uh, was one of the great uh, uh, teachers also of the massage technique of uh, Henry Okasaki, Sifukujits. Uh, but Sid Kufrath, Rick Alamany. Rick Alamany was a very close friend of mine. I love him to death. Matter of fact, a little bit about him. He was the first one I introduced to uh, uh, the late James Mitose. Uh, Rick Alamany was a great fighter, a great competitor. He's a great man. Uh, today, he's still with us. Uh, Rick Alamany is just, just a wonderful, wonderful man. I can, I've never found any student that has disliked Professor Alamany, uh, including myself. I happen to think the world of him, and I'd probably die for him in a heartbeat. Uh, but Rick is, um, uh, he's looked upon by many practitioners, not just in, uh, in you know, the United States, but also in Hawaii. He's also part of the AJI, American Jiu-Jitsu Institute. Uh, Rick is a man that uh, is a very honest individual. Uh, he's well known also for that smile. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about Rick. First time I met, uh, not the first time, but uh, I'll never forget one time I was, was uh, we were just kind of sparring with each other a little bit in my, in my dojo. And I thought that I got a kick in. And all of a sudden I saw this big smile coming out. I went, uh-oh, there went my ribs. <laughs> but Mr. Alamany, love him to death. I check on him often and love him to death. He was there. He's a great teacher. He's a Kempo practitioner. He studied from uh, Lake Ralph Castro. And then, of course, he made his mark in Hawaii. Many of the people in Hawaii have a lot of respect for Mr. Alamey. Um, another person that uh, was there, a uh, gentleman na named David Champ, who was, uh, at that time was uh, the Bucho in Kosharu on restorative arts. Now, David, uh, later on, uh, he actually was instrumental in uh, forming the AOBTA. American Oriental Body Works Association. Something about Dave Champ. If you met him, he could look at you 
and he knew exactly what you were eating, what you have eaten. He would know a lot about you. The guy was observant. He's a great healer. Uh, David Champ is probably one of the best healers that I've ever met. So we had a lot of different teachers that, that were at that gathering, that, uh, and that's what started the whole thing. Um, again, I, I'm going to bring up Professor Kufrath, great man. Uh, a lot of people today still have that same love for Professor Kufrath. Again, like I said, his daughter Leslie, uh, she shows up to gathering almost every year. Uh, and she, uh, I would tell everybody that goes to the gathering, if you got a chance to let her lay her hands on you, you should do so. She's a great massage therapist, and she is her dad. Um, so anyway, that just kept building and building and building. Since then, we had more and more teachers show up to the gathering. Um, so that was the very first one. Yeah, so over the years, you know, I've been to many, many, many gatherings, of course, and we talk a lot about the Kempo Arts. There's a big, you know, Kempo contingency that supports the gathering, of course, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about that maybe a little bit later, but I'm just curious on your perspective on some of these styles and you know, martial artists you've seen over the years. They've come and gone, and some of them have been figureheads at the gathering, uh, and, you know, talk a little bit maybe about these styles um, that are not sure. necessarily Kempo, like uh, maybe, say, uh, Michael Dialba, um, or, some, or some other folks? Well, my, my, Michael D'Alba, I love Michael to death. Um, he does uh, Farong Do. Uh, Farong is, at one time, Michael was with uh, Joe Bang Lee. But when Michael first started coming together, he's been very, very supportive. <clears throat> and I remember uh, Michael, uh, every year he was very supportive. He still is. He still is. He's, uh, he's a great man. He's a great practitioner. Um, he's a very loving man. He loves his arts. And um, Michael's still with us. Um, and uh, the love that Michael has, a good way to see that, is the love he had for his son, who's gone. Um, but Michael, uh, I'll, I'll never forget this one thing about Michael D'Alba. <clears throat> we had a gathering one year. It was at the uh, Doubletree in Sacramento. And everybody was making comments. Well, geez, where's Michael D'Alba? He didn't show up. He didn't show up. What happened? I'm walking down the hallway. Michael was there. He's walking down, and he says, Hanchi. I says, Michael, how are you doing? He says, you know I wouldn't miss this. And he wouldn't. Very, very loyal to the event. He's very loyal to the arts. And people that get into martial arts, you've got to understand that some of these teachers that have supported the gathering for years and years do so out of one word, love. They love the arts, and they love the arts that they represent. Michael is a great martial artist, great practitioner, and his students have got to constantly keep that in their minds, that love. Um, Michael B. Alba, several different teachers. Uh, I think of, of course, uh, milestones to, uh, of the arts. I talk about the who I refer to as the gatekeepers, which was Mike Young and Ming Lum. Ming Lum and Mike Young were always supportive of the gathering. Every year they were there. And they are the ones that help support and keep the arts alive. How do you see that changing now with their passing? You know, do you see a changing of the guard? And you know, who, who are the new gatekeepers in the martial arts today? Well, there's several of them. You know, after uh, Eric, after uh, these gentlemen passed on this year, as I was putting things together, gathering, all of a sudden I realized that um, these people that have been supporting for so many years are now seniors. And a lot of the seniors have passed. I'll go over just some of the seniors that have passed, and I'll go back to them that have been to the gathering. Uh, some of the individuals, um, oh, you got, like I said, Mike Young, being alum, uh, Sifuel Novak, uh, he's no longer with us. Uh, Glenna Bracey, who had just passed this year. Glenna and I are very, very close. Uh, Glenna Bracey was a student of uh, Otto van der Groen, which was the son of Liga van der Groen, Indonesian, uh, um, a great, all of these people, great practitioners. Glenn is no longer with us. He would come to the gathering every year, and he was also a top Filipino practitioner. Uh, the new ones, the new guys, I'll, I'll bring up some names of some of these people, and, and they'll come out. That's why everybody that thinks about an event, they should go to the gathering because they represent so much and so many people. We have the Wall of Legends. They want to see all the people that were there. All they've got to do is look at that. 
and they go up and see that wall of legends, I usually give a description of everybody that's on that wall. There's somewhat over 200 and some of them now. And the wall of legends is my hall of fame. My hall of fame, uh, unfortunately, you, you have to be deceased and you have to have done something in your life. And exam- the reason I bring that up, Eric, is because, for instance, I'm not done. Um, I don't want to consider myself a senior. It looks like I'm heading there, but there's a lot of friends today that have been supportive of it for years. Um, I'm going to bring up a couple of people that have been coming to the gathering that I would consider seniors of the arts. Um, okay, I'll bring up these guys. Roy Goldberg. Roy Goldberg, Daitoru Aikijits. He studied from Takeda. Oh, no, not from Takeda, excuse me. Kiyama Sensei. Uh, Roy is probably one of the top people in the world in Daitoru. Uh, if you want to experience great martial arts, you meet Mr. Goldberg. Uh, Ili Chuan, the grandmaster of that. Sam Chen. Not too many internal silos like this gentleman. He is a, um, oh, he walks in a room. He uh, radiates internal energy, internal power. Great practitioner. Other people. Uh, I'll bring up some of the Okinawan stylists that show up to the gathering, because I consider the seniors. Um, Jerry Pennington. Jerry Pennington, one of the top exponents of, if you want to use the term kumite or Okinawan karate do, is Jerry. Jerry will be out there this year. He would be one of the real seniors. Mr. Pennington, Mr. Robert Bowles of Shiriru. Mr. Bowles uh, is phenomenal. Uh, his karate is, he came from the late Robert Trias. Robert Bowles, uh, Pete Rubino, another gentleman. Uh, these guys that came from the Trias lineage that show up to the gathering, everybody should pay attention to them. They're still with us. They're our seniors. Uh, gentlemen, I have been coming out to gathering every year. And if he hears this, he's probably going to get embarrassed, but that's just too bad. That's his problem, not mine. A uh, uh, man by the name of uh, Mr. Duncan, Mr. Duncan from uh, back east, great practitioner. When you talk to um, Rudy Duncan, you want to sit down and, and watch him. Now, the thing that impressed me about Rudy, at the gathering one year, I, and this is when we held it in Chicago, I was walking out, and he was babysitting someone. Not only that, he was extracting knowledge. Mr. Duncan was talking to the late Mike Young. Mike Young had knowledge about everyone. Ming Lum. God, every time I bring up Ming and some of his uh, predecessors, anybody within the Chinese arts and Chinese community had an ultimate uh, uh, respect for uh, Sifu uh, Ming Lum. Matter of fact, today, if you were to go to San Francisco, I'm not going to bring up today today, but let's say uh, you could feel the, the absence of Ming. You could feel their absence. I go to Hawaii. I could feel the absence of Mike or Ming. These people were, were treasures. Well, there are new treasures. There are new treasures of the arts. Um, another gentleman that, to me, is a, uh, is a senior, Bill Owens. Bill Owens, a great practitioner, great martial artist. And Bill also is not, uh, he came up within the Kaju Kimbo uh, uh, group, but he was also a top Gong Fu practitioner. He trained some of the top Gong Fu people that we used to compete in tournaments. Uh, their arts. He is also one of the exponents of Capoeira. And uh, Mr. Owens, and I'm going to bring up his, uh, his wife, Mary, one of the great fighters. She, unfortunately, you guys, I'm talking to Bill and Mary. You guys are seniors, man, you know. You're uh, you're the new the the new wave. Uh, another another individual, um, and that would be uh, Horacio Rodriguez. Horacio Rodriguez has taken on the legacy of Victor de Tours. Horacio uh, considers himself a student of the arts, and he is. He does Sarak, uh, which is a silat system. Oh, another thing, we talk about martial arts systems. I want people to understand that there's more than just one fly. There's several. If you bring up the arts of Silat, there's hundreds of arts of Silat. Uh, some of the ones I'm more familiar with, there's, there's two other gentlemen I like to get, uh, if I can get a hold of them, I'll try to kick them uh, where the sun doesn't shine and get them back out to the gathering. Sam and, and Shamsul, they do uh, Sinigayong Silat. They're out of Chicago, Illinois. But there are different Silat systems. Filipino arts, 
another senior, uh, Carlito Banjak, uh, Ron Saturno, several of these guys. Uh, they've gone there. And I'm going to bring up another person, Jason Ine, who I actually had uh, the opportunity to work with his, his dad. Um, and as Mike Ine. These guys are trying to progress and keep the arts alive. When it comes to the Danzan Rue, there's several people. Uh, there's a man by the name of Mr. Inkelbritson. There's other people that have come from the different systems and different styles that are now surfacing to the top. One thing that really projects them is the gathering. The gathering gets them there. They become members of the, the collective society. Again, it's non-denominational. The one thing about the collective society, we give out uh, certification acknowledging what they have, what they've done. We do not promote people. That stuff sometimes gets out of hand. And that's just kind of a little pet peeve of mine. But anyway, there's so many different martial artists and so many different systems and styles. A gentleman that came out this uh, last year uh, from the Ed Parker group. Uh, uh, all of these guys that come out and study and train, and they train together, and they get along. They, they get along, and that's what it's all about. And if you can do that, the collective society, I want to explain where who got my idea going on that and also the gathering. Probably one of the greatest martial artists of all time, if not the, Robert Trias. I remember something Trias lectured me on. He told me, he said, Bruce, if you want your art to continue, it's not the people within your art that are going to do it. It's those outside. Those outside of your art will become supportive, and those are the ones that will keep your art from alive. He says, sometimes knowledge is a wonderful thing, but if abused and if taken the wrong way, it can become destructive. And you'll see this in styles today. I see different stylists, different practitioners that argue amongst themselves. I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Um, all of these guys at the gathering, the gathering is something, Eric, that takes place where everybody gets along for at least two or three days. It is wonderful. Another senior, I'm going to bring him up. He's going to get upset with me, but I don't care. Uh, it's a Taekwondo practitioner. Now, but you know what's so funny, Eric, is every time anybody that has been to the gathering, they always ask about this gentleman. They go, Bruce, how is Doc? Doc Gavin has done is so instrumental in changing the mood and the mode of people and how they act. He calls yeah, it you the way he sees it. When you mm -hmm. said that it's all about people getting along, that's the first person that I thought of that gets along with everybody and brings everybody together. He's such a presence. Great man. Oh, Doc Gavin, uh, we, we talk sometimes on a weekly basis. Um, you know, he's, uh, here's, his, here's his favorite little saying. <clears throat> if you call him up, and he's had a lot of difficulties, physical difficulties, and he's overcome them. And if I call him up, I'll say, Doc, how you doing? He's out of Chicago. He'll say, never had a bad day in my life. This guy's been through a lot, and he always comes out with a smile, no matter what. Now, everybody didn't ask about Doc. They're not looking at his style. They're looking at him because of the fact of who he is. I don't look at people's styles or the belts. To me, I find that all kind of silly. It's about us as people. We have art forms that we can project and that, that we can allow it to stimulate the human spirit. But when you take an art form and a style, and then you want to attack others that have styles, whether they're similar or not similar, that is a mistake. Another person I think about, <clears throat> Professor Nick Serio. I uh, came from the Kempo world. Professor Serio is responsible for much of the Kempo, if not all of it, on the East Coast. Now, you think of Fred Villari, you think of Professor Serio, a lot of people think of uh, Pizarri, all these different individuals, but Nick Serio is the one who really projected it. And when I first met Professor Serio, he didn't like me too much. After we had dinner together, we became best of friends. And the person that brought Professor Serio uh, uh, along with an understanding of Kempo was the late Thomas Young, again, a great man. Professor Serio is not with us. However, he has a great group that are very strong with him. They're out of Canada. And that gentleman's name is Clermont Poulin. And um, I'll never forget, uh, uh, many of uh, Clermont Poulin's students are studying uh, through me, 
And I remember when I first uh, saw Claremont, he says, uh, what would you like us to do, Auntie? I says, you see that picture on your wall? He says, yeah, it was the next serial. Keep his art alive. They've done it. And <clears throat> so the thing is, Eric, the collective society, now there's a guy doing Kosho, uh, moi, and other systems, and I'm protective of all of them. I love all of them. Uh, Filipino arts. Do you know, Eric, do you understand how many styles of the Filipino arts there are? Oh, my God. And they should all be respected. They're all great. Don't discard something or don't take something to attack another. You don't do that. What you do, if you're going to attack something, attack the, the individual. Nobody's a saint, okay? But the art forms, they all deserve to live long. Yeah, so, but there's a lot of seniors. Well, go ahead. So kind of speaking to that, with in the Kempo world, you know, this is something obviously we talk about frequently, but uh, mm -hmm. what do you see, you know, going forward? There are so many different styles, and, and, and not just in Kempo, the Kempo world, but uh, specifically the Kempo. What do you see as far as the future for the arts? Uh, do you, you know, how, how can we bring them together? What are some of your objectives? What would you like to see happen with the Kempo world? <clears throat> well, you know, I'm going to bring up something Matosi said. So when you seek wisdom, look for similarities. And ignore the nitpickers. Here's the problem. Now, of course, Eric, you know I came up within the Kempo group as well. Okay? I can do their kata. I can do their techniques. I can do a lot of what they do. I started the, the Kempo karate uh, system, uh, I want to say, via 1963, something like that, maybe. I was, yeah, I think it was around then. But I've seen it all. I've seen it. And today I see some of them arguing amongst themselves or they get so protective of, of what they perceive as the, the, uh, the mountain that they own that they forget the whole. Now, when you look at Kempo, if they start looking at their history and understand that there are a lot of common things there, then what you have people do is they argue about one thing or the other. Now, let's look at the genius within Kempo. Uh, Ed Parker was a genius. Ed Parker, when he came here to the United States, and what he did was absolute genius. He studied from William Chow, but he also got a lot of his Kempo from other people. Okay? And Ed Parker was not ashamed of borrowing a movement or a concept or a theory. Today, what I see some people doing within Kempo, as I see what they're doing, is say, look at me, I'm king of the hill, and I'm better than you. That's not what it's all about. It's all about study. It's all about, you, you know what makes me feel good, Eric? When I have a student of the past or whenever it comes up to me and thanks me for enhancing their life somehow. It has nothing to do with my technique. In Kempo, I'll give you an example. I'm talking about the Parker system. Okay, first of all, you got the Parker system. you got the Tracys. you got the Tom Connors. you got uh, different groups, okay? And then what I do is sometimes when I travel, I'll see these guys, they actually get in arguments over what form is better or how are you going to do this technique? How are you going to do five swords? Um, how are you going to do dance 1A? That's a different form of Kempo, okay? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do it? Mine is better than yours. That's when it gets stupid. That's when it gets stupid, Eric, because they can all learn from each other. There's nothing wrong with doing that. If they do that, they could all end up taking on an attitude like my friend Doc Gavin or so many other people that come to the gathering. You know that gathering, Eric, the nice thing about that? They, they show up at the event on a, on a Friday night. They'll sit around and lounge together, and they're all joking together and talking. They, they don't have their styles in their heads. They have the arts. He's a good martial artist. They are secure within themselves. They're not sitting running around like a couple of dogs acting like who's better than who. I, I used to see that all all the time within the Philippine arts, and um, which is wrong. They're all good. They all stand on their own. They all stand on their own. I, I think the big problem is, too, when they all get so competitive that it gets silly. It actually gets silly. Um, oh, other seniors of the arts. I'm going to bring up a Kempo person. Not only Kempo, but also uh, this, uh, a woman by the name of Diane Tanaka. Not just Kempo. She does Pukiti Tursi, which is also Filipino artist. Diane Tanaka can go right through the nonsense with people. And I enjoy Diane. She is absolutely wonderful. And her husband, Zach, 
They're great. Those are seniors. Um, Denise Gonzalez, to me, is a senior. Uh, a lot of these people that have been going to the gathering every year, and there's so many I'm not, I, I'm not bringing up in this, but they are. They're seniors. Those are the new seniors. And um, what I realize is I've been going through programs within the gathering. I'm realizing, whoa, oh, oh my goodness, these guys are the seniors. <laughs> and then all I want to do is I want to figure out how I can go high in a corner. But, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so kind of speaking about all these different arts, and I was just thinking about your, your new program, the Okuden uh, program mm -hmm. you put together, which is, which is brilliant. Um, I think from my perspective, it's so, it's so in line with a lot of different arts, but I, I have a feeling that people feel it's only a Kempo type of a perspective or from Ooh. that world, but it's, it's so, to me, it's more universal. Can you talk a little bit about well, how the Okuden sure. program Okuden? Okay. Well, you, you know, you know, Eric, we're using the term Okuden, but the, here's the thing. Here's, here's some people that I think uh, teach at that, at that level. Uh, <clears throat> the, the thing that I've been able to do, I'll bring up Mitosi, for instance. James Mitosi, um, his last uh, book he wrote, What is True Self-Defense, um, <clears throat> it, it was written as a riddle. Those people that get uh, a hold of his writings, I won't let those go without the DVDs I have produced that interprets the writings. Matosi was abstract. He would not have been accepted today in teaching. He was too far gone. I'm going to say Okuden. Other people, I bring up Roy Goldberg. He's Okuden level. Okay. Um, I remember him and I talking. We were laughing together once, and it was in New York. We were at a sushi bar, and I was talking about Matosi. He was talking about his teacher, Kiyama. And I'll never forget him talking about Kiyama. Kiyama said, Roy. I take you for a lesson. So he takes him out and shows him the ocean and says, you watch wave, watch wave. And he leaves. He didn't come back for a while. So there's Roy trying to figure out what the hell was he doing? That's Okuden. You can't do that to the populace today. They want an answer now. So Okuden level is a level that goes beyond the lesson, beyond the class. It makes you think. Uh, in Koshiru, uh, I'm teaching Okuden. Okudan now is, it's out there. For instance, I was teaching someone in, uh, and the only reason I brought it up this way is because uh, when I was up in Quebec, I was having a, li a rough time trying to explain a concept of, of throwing and, and that kind of thing. So I, I ended up taking a pair of my glasses, and I took them off and put them back on. And as I'm putting them on again, I had somebody hold my hand. As I'm putting the glasses on, I threw them. And then as I put the glasses back down and off, because of the rotation of the body, just to do something simple as that, I threw him and I counteracted his next move. That's Okuden level. That's something totally different. Other people that I think that are really Okuden, one I brought up, Sam Chen, Ili Chuan, another person that I did not bring up, and he is a senior. This gentleman I'm going to bring up right now, he's one of the best martial arts students and practitioners, Bernard Langen. Bernard Langen, um, I, I, I always kind of kid around with him. Now, Bernie Langen, is, uh, he's like a rubber band man. I mean, you go to move, you go to do a technique, he's there, he's everywhere. And Bernie is a student first, a technician last. Technique, is something Mitosi told me, is born from unconscious thought. And that's true. That's Okuden. What I'm teaching now, Okuden, what I'm doing is teaching those kinds of principles and concepts. For instance, you change your visual plane, your whole anatomy adjusts to that. I'm teaching people to pay attention to those kinds of things. Does it work? Oh, yeah. yeah it works. Yeah, it works. Uh, but it is a process of study. Most practitioners, they want a trick. They want a trick and a technique. Okuden's way of, uh, beyond that. I'm seeing different people adjust to those principles that, that maybe I've been in contact with or whatever, and, and I try to bring them around. I want everybody in the arts, if you have a good concept or theory, borrow it, use it, and you know what it's going to do? It's going to make the arts better. Now, remember me bringing up Ed Parker? That's what he was doing. He would take something that was good, and he would use it. What happens? Who puts the brakes on it are students. Students will take it, and they want to make a technique out of it, and then they want to spend their time arguing with each other. 
uh, I've seen a couple of stylists uh, that come from the same style living on the same street, and they won't support each other. To me, that's very stupid. And unfortunately, you know, all of us can be stupid. Um, I always clown around with why I can be that way. I'm Polish. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, um, Okuden is is cosmos. I have a lot of people that are trying to that are studying that from me now, and I'm trying to keep them going. The Okuden programs that I'm doing now are expressing these things, and I'm having a lot of people are doing them. I just left uh, uh, my last trip. Unfortunately, lately was uh, I went uh, through Boston. I went to Rhode Island. I had some of the people that showed up. I was teaching them Okuden, and they're going, "Oh my God." I said, no, it's right here, but you don't see that because you're too busy trying to copy a technique. Look beyond it. Eric, everything we do, we've got to look beyond it. You've got to remember your anatomy has, somebody one time was telling me about, well, what is sender? It's a ton de anahata. No. First of all, we have 800 muscles in the body, roughly, and that's how many centers you have. Ooh, you connect that with a contact point with another opponent. Ooh, that's now elevated to 1600. So, ooh, there's a slight motion different. That elevates it to something else. What I'm trying to teach people to do is see all of those things. Matosi, I bring up Rick Alamany for a second. Rick Alamany, I brought a student out to meet him, and the student asked, "What was it like meeting Matosi?" And Alamany says, uh, "He touched me. He knew everything about me. He knew what I was, who I was, everything." Well, that's what we want to get to be like. We want to be able to eventually see things before they happen. And it's not that hard to do. Well, it is, because we get clouded up with ourselves. There's a saying I like, uh, never take, uh, take yourself too ser- uh, Take what you do seriously, but never yourself too seriously. Yeah. So anyway, Okuden is, is the cosmos. And those are things right now that I'm projecting and in, in, uh, uh, trying to project them. Actually, uh, you're helping me out with this. Right. And I want to see practitioners do this. Why do I want them doing it at that level? I want to tell you why. Because it's a selfish reason. Because if I can make every student see way beyond what I see, guess what I got to do? I got to play catch up. So I got to get better. So my students are my teachers. And you'll watch things and you'll see things. The idea is to keep yourself humble. Yep. Absolutely. Well, great. Uh, so your Okuden program is still open. People can still contact you for that. Oh, people can still, yeah, they can still contact me with Okuden. Uh, uh, my phone number, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out, 916-308-2606. Um, and they may call me, and uh, I'll discuss all of that with them. And, and also the gathering. The gathering is coming up second week of October. Uh, it's going to be in Reno, Nevada, the Circus Circus. Call me and ask me about it. And also many schools are uh, getting involved with it. Uh, it doesn't matter the style. It doesn't matter the system. Okay? Uh, okay, I'll bring up one. Let's take Taekwondo. Whether it's ITF, USTF, WTA, ATA, it doesn't matter. All systems come from the same source. Uh, if you bring up the term Kempo, well, Kempo is a term that is more Japanese, okay? Chuan Fa is a Chinese term, okay? Uh, Kun Bap, it's a Korean term for the same thing. Kun Tao, the Indonesian, Filipino term for the same thing. Uh, it means this law, which deals with self-study of right and left. They all come from the same source, just some like sushi, some like kimchi, some like hamburgers. Uh, but that, yeah, have, yeah. If they're interested, those are listening to this again. Nine one six three zero eight two six zero six, or contact the uh, the uh, the Warrior Scholar, which is uh, Eric. Which you're you're kind of uh, leading that for us and, and getting things going. But yeah, uh, we're we're producing a lot of stuff, and a lot of people could uh, get into it and study and start growing. And also, too, those who are interested in becoming direct students of mine, please let me know. Okay? Please let me know. Oh, by the way, my name is Bruce Jetnick. Dumb name, huh? Okay. <laughs> 
Well, Hachi, I just want to thank you for taking this time and uh, sharing some of the stories, some great background there, some good history, and look forward to seeing you again soon, and definitely look forward to many more gatherings to come. Definitely this year will be a little different with everything that's happening today, but... Uh, oh, 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 another thing, another thing, another thing, if you don't mind. i gotta got to bring it up. <clears throat> some of the people that I'm in contact with, okay, I spend a lot of time with, I'm going to bring up a very good friend of mine. Uh, it's a top tournament fighter, a couple of them, and seniors. One of these seniors, Mr. Bill Wallace. Mr. Bill Wallace has got a great history. And also, Mr. Wallace, uh, a lot of people don't realize, you know, people that want to see uh, Bill just go out, his nickname is Superfoot, you've got to ask him about his past, about the things he's done. He's done a lot of great things for the martial arts. He really has. Uh, another gentleman I consider a real senior who comes to the gathering every year, Ron Marchini. Ron Marchini, um, he was, uh, his nickname was Gentleman Ron Marchini, and he is that. Uh, we're in communication quite a bit. He was one of the top tournament fighters of all the time, of all time. He's the guy that made Japanese karate work. And uh, uh, Ron's guys, I remember, Eric, when my guys were competing a lot, my guys would say, well, who do we watch out for? I said, well, see those guys over there with the broken noses? Those guys right there, they come from Ron Marchini. And uh, not all of them. Sorry, Ron, if you hear that. <clears throat> and... Um, Look out for those USK guys because if they hit you and not getting back up. And same thing with Ron's guys. When Mr. Marquini calls me all the time, he's, he, he, I just got to bring it up. He harasses me. He'll say, Bruce, because he knows who my hero is. Uh, maybe all the listeners can listen. My hero is Don Quixote. Okay? He was a dreamer. And he believed in the impossible dream. And he was known as a kind of a goof. He was busy chasing windmills. So Ron will call me up and say, Bruce, you're still chasing windmills? Yeah, Ron, I am. <laughs> and, you know, but I'll tell you something about Mr. Marchini. That guy had a sense of timing and technique very few ever possessed. And the thing that bothers Ron, this is something that bothers all these seniors, all of these people that are so interested in just getting ranks and certificates, your certificate is the work that you put into things. Your certificate is the meeting like people like uh, Doc Gavin, keeping that in mind. I bring up Denise uh, Gonzalez, or I bring up uh, Diane Tanaka. One of the first people they all talk about is Doc Gavin. And that's probably going to embarrass the heck out of Doc. Again, buddy, too bad. Okay, now shut up. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks again, Hanchi. Uh, we'll be talking to you very soon, and uh, be safe, okay? All right, man. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye.